What's up, everybody? This is the Jedi. <laughs> and welcome back, you guys, to my review of If Loving You Is Wrong. I want to say right from the top, I'm deeply, deeply sorry and apologize for not delivering a review to you guys last night for the haves and the have-nots. It was an outstanding episode. Um, and I did watch the episode, but I must tell you, when I got to page eight of my notes, I was like, I, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't. I can't. I can't. Because there was so much detail, you guys. So much. And so many one-liners that you don't want to leave out. And things like that. And, you know, but you want to be able to get them in the context of the scene and the sentence and all that stuff. And it was just an executive decision that I had to make, you know, because if I can't deliver the type of review that I want to see to you, then it should, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I shouldn't do one, you know? And it's not that I couldn't have done it, it's just that the review would have had to be an hour and a half. Because I, you guys know my, you guys have come to know my brand, you know how I do when I do show reviews, especially the haves and have nots, the best show ever written for network television in my view. And, you know, I have to talk about the episode, but I gotta put my little stuff in it. I gotta, you know, and I wanna, I want it's a show, I wanna entertain you. And if I can't give it my all, then I shouldn't get on the, I shouldn't get on the horse, you know? So I'm really, really sorry about it, you guys, because I really did want to talk about that episode Oh man, um, it just was too involved and I just have to come up with a formula that will be pleasing for you and acceptable to me uh, to be able to abbreviate, you know, and when sh when the episodes are like that, you know, um, it was just too, it was a, it was a reviewer's nightmare. <laughs> it really was. It really was. Not to mention that my tooth is killing me. Um... Wait, y'all. Anyway, so I deeply apologize, you guys. Please accept my apology. And God willing, we will have a review of that show next week. Hopefully it won't be a nightmare. And even if it is a nightmare from the standpoint of a reviewer, I will find some kind of way to still give you a review and still keep it short and still give you the content and stuff that you have come to uh, enjoy and expect from me, you know, you know, it's kind of like, you know, like, it's kind of like your favorite show. Like I even get like upset, like if a show changes the theme song to a show, if I really like it, you know, like, why are you changing it? You know? So anyway, but alas, tonight's episode of If Love Me Was Wrong was also a very good episode. And we find out that th there's only one more episode left before the season finale of the show. Oh, yes. So I think we can make quick haste of this uh, review and this episode. Now, remember last week, it ended when Brad comes, when the, when Dr. Ross, Roston calls the house trying to, for, for Marcy, trying to reach Brad. He comes out of the bathroom and the lying ass, stank ass, fake ass Alex lies to him about who's on, you know, she's just, we, we leave that episode, we're just sitting there looking at him when he was like, who was it? And she's just, all right, so we, we begin right there. So Brad's like, yeah, who was it? Well, it was, it was Dr. Rustin. Okay. And she was calling about Marcy. So she wanted to speak to me. Well, she, she was calling about Marcy. So she wanted to talk to me. Well, yeah. Well, he goes, well, then maybe it's important. Brad, I promise you, she's fine. I promise you, she's fine. How, do, how can you promise me that? I wish he'd said that. How can you promise me that? How can you promise me? Are you at the hospital now? How can you promise me? Because she said that several times. I promise you, she's fine. I promise you. So finally, Brad goes, well, look, do you have, do you have her phone number? Um, well... Um, I, I, I don't know where it is. I, 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 I think I might have it. So he's looking at her like, bitch, get it. 
And then she's like, well, I, I have to look for it because, you know, he goes, what about your phone? It would be in your phone. Like, you've talked to her many times on your phone. Well, I lost all my contacts and I have to go through and I just end the bitch's line and I'm over it. Big bitch. Finally, Brad tells, so then finally, uh, the phone rings. And it is, and it is, and it is Marcy, wasn't it? Uh, it was Dr. Rostin. Okay, and why I got mixed up because it's, she's calling on Marcy's phone, I think, because when he answered, he said, Marcy. And she goes, no, it's Dr. Rostin. I'm calling for Marcy. Yeah, okay. I know it wasn't crazy. Anyway, so, um, he goes, what's going on? So she's telling him, like, yeah, Marcy is asking for you. Like, she's really upset, and, you know, she just needs somebody to calm her down. And we're trying to get her calmed down, and she needs you, basically. So, he goes, okay, I'll be right there. So he gets off the phone, and then fake-ass Alex is like, you're going to see her. You're going to see her. Said the pancake bitch. You're going to see her. He goes, yeah, she's, she needs me. Brad, I promise you, she's fine. She's got the doctors there. She's fine. No, I need to go and see her. So, Brad is going. Make make a long story short. And then she comes with this, well, I should go too. He's like, no, your ass don't need to go. You need to sit right, right here. She's like, no, I should go and... You know, I can help to comfort her. <laughs> Brad just had this look at her real subtle, like, are you really think I'm going for that bitch? Really? Really? Like, that's your good girlfriend. <laughs> no, Alex, I think you should stay here. I'm going to see her. So anyways, he leaves out. Tick, tick, tick. She's on the phone, calls the babysitter. Okay, this is not the same babysitter. No, I'm thinking about the um, Tristata. Never mind. All right, fine. So she calls the babysitter. Because I was going to say, we ain't seen this babysitter. She calls it the babysitter. It's Alex. Can you come over? I have an emergency. Can you just come over? <laughs> so the babysitter agrees she can come over. All right, fine. So, uh, yeah, I can't finish with her because something else happens. All right, then we see Natalie and Lou. Best scene of the night, in my view. Because this scene was, it was so, because remember I told y'all, we, to, we need to get back to Lou and Natalie. We need to get back to Lou and Natalie. Woo, woo. So again, Tyler listens to my review. He does what I tell him every now and then. All right, when he wants a successful episode and a successful show, he has to do what I, what I tell him. All right, fine, whatever. So, and probably he's just being nice because my birthday is on Sunday and he's trying, whatever, Tyler, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I'm hearing rumblings. I heard from some of the staff, you know, and some of my crew and everything, something about a Bentley. I, I don't want to get into it. I I'm not impressed. I, I won't be, I won't want it. Whatever. Whatever. Anyway. Mm. So... It's Lou and Natalie, and she's telling me, you know, we haven't been really spending a lot of time together. It was so touching and tender. I loved it. And uh, he goes, like, what do you mean? You know, we, we spend time. He goes, we haven't really, we haven't really been spending time together. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And uh, she goes, I was thinking about everybody else, you know. Like, Eddie's the biggest fucking liar and racist. And she's just saying everybody is going through it. And, like, Brad is this, and Randall is a fucking crazy fuck that needs to be hit by a bus, and, you know, everybody's just kind of, like, off the loop. She goes, and then there's you. You're solid. You know, you're a good man. You don't cheat. And Lou is just standing there, Big Lou. So I'm saying, because that's Big Lou, homie, from back in the day, cuz. So, she goes, this is the part where you say... Of course I don't cheat, or something like that. He goes, I don't cheat, you know. So then they have this whole, like, little foreplay thing, you know. 
And he goes, you know, well, I, she goes, well, I'm gonna let you get to work. Cause no, I can, you know, I can wait, you know, I can wait. And they starting to get a little hot and heavy. Ding dong. And I'm like, who the hell is this gonna be? Okay, it can't be Kelly, she's in jail. It can't be Marcy, she's at the hospital. It's not, um, yeah, it can't be Kelly or, or Marcy. So it's gotta be the fucking bean burrito. He opens the door. Sure enough, it's the bean burrito, you guys, and this much material. And if you look closely, her legs were actually turning blue, everybody, because the skirt is so fucking tight. Oh, I saw what the varicose veins. I saw them. I saw it. Right. And ladies, let me know. But I could have sworn the heifer's not wearing a bra because I thought I saw areolas and peaks and summits and things oh I can't with her dude I can't so she comes slithering in and they're like hi um, Esperanza hi you know and she's like hi you guys hi so Lou's like okay so um I'm gonna get on to work I'm gonna get on out of here and he goes she goes I love you he goes I love you too and they have like a little kiss so the fucking bean burrito picked up on it. She was like, oh my God, was this bad time? She goes, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. No, I'll go get him. Lou, Lou, come back. She was like, no, no, no. It's okay. He needs to go to work anyway. <clears throat> so Natalie tells her, she's like, anyways, I, you know, uh, I'm getting used to this housewife thing anyway. And she was, are you sure you want to do this now? Lee? She was, yeah, I'm sure. You know, she's like, where were you last night? I went and had dinner. With who? With Steven. You like him? I do, but just for just because the sex is good, but it's over. I already ended it and whatever. But Natalie is looking at it like, yeah, but it's written all over your face. You know, you saying one thing, so I'm saying, but you looking like something else, you feel me? You going all through your phone like he gonna call you any second and all these things, you know what I'm saying? Basically you're a lying ass bitch. That's what she said, that was in the script. I wrote it. She said, you're a lying ass bitch. It says it right there. It's right there. <laughs> so that's gospel. So that's gospel. You know what I'm saying? That's gospel right there. <laughs> what I see is gospel. You know what I'm saying? That's gospel. You know what I'm saying? Gospel. So she says, no, I ended it. I ended it. I mean, it's nice. And, and I, okay, I like him. I like him. But just, you know, I'm over it. So... They just get off that, and then um, Natalie is telling her, like, you know, um, you know, we need to, um, we need to, you need to see Kelly and see if she want, you know, if we can get Justice down there to see her, you know, because um, do you know that do you know that Justice been was to, was talking to um, Justice the, or that the mole was talking to Justice? She was, yeah. Lucius told me. Lucian told me. She goes, yeah, and you need to see if um, Kelly wanted him to come down there and, you know, and see her. She's already made it very clear she does not want um, Justice to see her in there like that. And then Natalie goes, no, she needs, he needs to go down there and see her because she, he needs to hear the truth directly from her. You know, and she's like, yeah, you're right, you're right. I'll, I'll talk to her. So I'm over it. Anyway, then we see fake as Kelly. You know what I'm saying again, ladies. You know what I'm saying if you disrespect the Jedi, you know what I'm saying you dis you get with me. You know what I'm saying and you straight disrespect me, straight you straight cheat on me, straight disrespect. You know what I'm saying this what happens. You saying bad things happen. You know what I'm saying only problems know you. Feel me? So that's I mean I'm just telling you. I'm just trying to tell you what can happen. Just you know what I'm saying. So you know what I'm saying? if you're trying to holler, you need to be sure. You know what I'm saying you need to clean stuff up and stuff and everything. So in comes the little um, six year old lawyer. All right, and uh, he goes. So uh, yeah, I've been looking at your case and the details of it, and talk to the to the prosecutor, and they're they're willing to give you a deal. She goes, a deal? I don't want no deal. He goes, I think you should at least look at it. She goes, I don't want any deal. You know. He goes, well, I think that you should look at this. You know, because right now it's life. It, you know, they're, they're willing. It's both these both these murders carry the death penalty and they're willing to give you life for both of them you know at least you'll be able to see your son grow up she was like no i don't want that i don't want no deal 
I don't want no deal. He goes, well, I think you should think about it at least. She goes, well, I think you're fired. He goes, are you sure about that? She goes, yeah, you're fired. I want another lawyer, a lawyer who can listen. He also showed her the fucking videotape, y'all, from goddamn Randall's ass. I'm telling you, Randall must die. He showed her the video. She go, he goes, because they shall be this today. Remember when he when Randall was sitting outside of her cell and, he, and then she said, I sh I, uh, you lucky I had that gun. I'll blow you away the same way I did Travis. And he goes, you're making this very easy for them to prosecute you. They had the videotape. I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm over it. Oh, my God. But we don't care, everybody, because it's her. <laughs> By the way, tonight's episode was called Rock Solid, and I don't know why. All right. I don't need to. Anyway, so he goes, okay, you know, um, I was appointed to you because you are broke bitch. So I have to go let the judge know that you don't want me so they can get you somebody else. So he leaves out. Then that funky ass Randall, there he is storming into um, Ian's office. Big commotion and then here he comes. I, oh my God, I hate Randall of the, of both the shows, Have and Have Nots and, and the Love Me Is Wrong. I think I decided tonight, as bad as I cannot stand Hannah and anybody else that I hate on that show, Randall, I think I hate more than anybody I hate on TV currently anywhere, period. I can't with this dude. I can't. Anyway, he goes, where's Larry? Where's Larry? He goes, he's not in. He's not in. Well, when did you hear from him? He goes, well, it's been like a day and a half. And he goes, you don't know where he's at? He goes, no, I've been, you know, I'm trying to get a hold of him. He goes, he's your partner. He goes, yeah, he is my partner. Well, then why can't you get a hold of him? I goes, I don't know. He goes, well, um, have you tried to call the police? He goes, why would I call the police? And the fake ass lizard ass Randall goes because he pissed off Eddie. He goes, and, you know, like, what's up with that? And then, um, I think Ian knew that Eddie's bad. I'm not sure. Anyways, he goes, well, or I think then Randall told him, like, because, you know, he's, like, he's a bad cop. And, like, you know, if you haven't heard from Larry, you need to get a hold of the police and make sure nothing's happened to him. You know, so he's like, okay, I'm on it. I'm on it, you know. And he goes, and why were you at the restaurant last night? And Ian goes, I go, just like, at, at what's the name, Pickles? He goes, I go there a lot. He goes, why were you there with Marcy? He goes, she sold me a house. He goes, you always go out with people to sell you a house? And then Ian goes, excuse me, he goes, only the cute ones. He goes, you think that's funny? He goes, I was just trying to be, I was just trying to make a joke. So, then psychotic ass Randall, are you into her? Are you into her? You know, what? I can't with him, it pisses me off so much because he's the worst hypocrite ever on TV. Like, the same shit you doing, you actually have a real attitude about somebody else doing stuff. No, Randall, it does not work like that. Oh, I can't with this dude, man. Yeah, Tyler needs to kill him off. I can't. Anyways, and then he asked him, like, how come you didn't, um, get me out of jail last night? Or why you didn't help me or whatever? And he was like, you know, whatever. I don't remember what Ann told him. Because I see Red when I see Randall. I can't remember anything that he says or does. Because all I can see is him six feet under. That's the only thing I can imagine. I just can't, you guys. Oh, my God. Uh. Anyway. So, he goes, yeah, I'll get on it, you know. So, basically, he's filling in now for Larry and Larry's absence. Because it's their firm. So, by default, he's kind of his lawyer, too. And he's like, yeah, and I want all this stuff added to all the other people that I'm suing. You know. I can't. And then at one point, when Ian tells him to, to calm down, he's like, do you want you want a cup of coffee? He's like, do I look like I need some damn coffee? Ian goes, actually, you look like you need a drink. See what I'm saying? That's what Tyler wrote. What I had wrote that didn't make it 
And he said, actually, your ass look like you need a fucking quailu and to be knocked the fuck upside your head. That's what you look like you need. But being an attorney, I'm just suggesting it. Um, I mean, no shade, feel me? Just no shade. So that, but that's what you look like. So I'm saying. Or you look like a damn lizardous dinosaur that needs to be dug up and buried again. Anyway. So, the fake ass Randall finally leaves out, out of Ian's office. Ian is going to be a good match for him. I hope Ian gives him hell. I hope, because he tells him, he says, uh, he told Ian, he goes, you, you, you know that, um, that guy, because you're somebody, you know, you see what he did to me. He goes, you know that, that's the guy that, that, um, she's having an affair with. And then Ian goes, but from what I heard, you started it because you have an affair with, 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 um, with his wife. And then that pisses Randall off. You see what I mean? Fake ass. I can't, dude. I can't. Oh, man. Anyway. So, he finally leaves out of the damn office and my blood pressure goes down. So, Ian gets on the phone calls Lou. He's like, yeah. Lou, I need you to do me a favor. You know. Like, it's about Larry. You know. Um... I need you to see, um, about Larry because Randall was here and he was telling me, you know, about Eddie. And so you need to check in, you need to, I need you to check up on this, but I need you to keep it on the down low. Lou goes, did you call his wife? And he goes, she's actually part of the problem. You're not really sure what he meant by that y'all. Did I miss something during the season? Anyway, he goes, but I usually keep it on, on the low, like, just keep it kind of quiet because, um, you know, Larry does drugs and sometimes he, he's known to, like, come up missing for a couple days, you know, he'll be off with a woman or off with a man for, like, a couple days and we won't hear from him. So, you need to find out, like, what's going on and do this on the low. Lou goes, okay, but you're going to need to do me a favor. And then he goes, Lou, I can't, I can't help her. He goes, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Or I can't help you. Appreciate my boy Lou. Feel me? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Because that's my homeboy Lou from back in the day. That's how we work, homie. That's how we work, nigga. That's how we work, nigga. We don't play games, cuz. We don't play games, kids. Kids. I'm whore, but I'm drinking tea, nigga. I'm whore, but I'm still whore. Real G drink tea. I don't know how you drink hard, though. <laughs> I don't know how you, how you drink hard. I'm about to work that out, y'all. Gotta work on my gangster. Anyway. So he goes, otherwise I can't help you. So Larry goes, all right, fine. Ouch. Oh, you guys don't know. Because I told y'all when I had this other two pull, they wanted to pull two others, and I said, I don't think so. You ain't messing up my Janet Jackson smile. So I'm saying, you don't do that, cuz. Go for that. So I'm saying. Anyway. So he goes, all right, fine. I know a guy that I can call that can help you. So Lou goes, all right, all right. Um, he goes, all right, let me, let me know what you find out. And then Lou goes, okay. They hang up. Then Larry and fucking Eddie... Eddie goes, pulls up to the damn U-Haul truck, goes in. Wake up, asshole. Hey, wake up. And Larry's not waking up. So then he goes over and he pisses on him. I could lecture, and this could turn into not a review, but we're going to keep it review, and I'm not going to lecture, and I'm not going to get worked up. All right. Look, I got my tea. Bring me a Valium. Do it now. All right. Anyways. Oh, no. Bring me some propofol. Can, do we have that? Do we have that? All right. Let's get that going. Thanks, guys. You guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. Just the way you guys care for me and look out for my health. I love you. All right. Fine. Anyways. So... 
then um, then he gets a phone call. It's a little it's some bitch call. Hello, Eddie. Where are you? He goes. He goes. I'm out. He goes. Um. Uh. Where's Larry? He goes. Who? He goes. A lot of people are looking for him. And um. He. Who are you, my bitch? <laughs> Bastard. So who goes? A lot of people are looking for Larry. You know. And kidnapping is a federal offense. All right. And um. And and, you go, and and then Eddie's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And Lou is like, well, you better get him back safe and now. All right? Because he, he missed a press conference and a meeting. And the next thing you know, this is going to hit the press and it's going to be a nightmare for your fake racist bitch ass. Oh, that's what he told him. That's what he told him. If you heard anything else, then they scrambled the, the signal on your channel, on your TV and I don't know what to tell you. All right? He says it's going to be a nightmare for your bitch ass, Nikki. That's what I'm saying. That's what he said, cuz. So, he goes, it's going to hit the news, and all the hell will be on you. So, Eddie keeps on denying it. And then, all of a sudden, Lou goes, Eddie, why are you in the middle of nowhere, standing outside of a box truck, next to a box truck? Hey, Lou, you can't be pulling that, that FBI bullshit on me. He goes, yes, I can. I'm still building my case. Eddie is shook for the first time ever, I think, y'all. Ever. Do you understand me? Ever. Ever. First of all, fire somebody in wardrobe. My damn do-rag is too tight. All right, I don't care. I, I don't care. All right, who was it? Khadijah? She's got to go. She's. We love her, but she's got to go. Got to go. All right. I, I'm live. I can't have my do-rag being this tight. And I'm tired. Anyway. So, and by the way, Lou is looking at it on this computer, like the GPS, the, you know what I'm saying, the Google Earth, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> all up in the piece. So, uh, so he's like, yes, I can, I'm still building, I'm still building my case. And, um, he goes, if you didn't want me to know where you at, you shouldn't have answered your damn phone. Oh, Lou is coming so smooth that with it, y'all just like, I got your ass by the cojones, homeboy. So, um, anyway, so he goes, you better get him home and right now fast and pray that he doesn't, um, that he doesn't want to press charges against your fake racist ass. So Eddie is shook. Lou hangs up on him. Just hangs up on him. Don't give him a chance to say nothing. That's what I'm saying. Don't give him a chance to say Nathan. That's what I'm saying. So he goes over and he's kicking Larry. Wake your bitch ass up. Wake up, son bitch. Wake up. Larry's out. He reached down, he's filled his juggler like his neck. No pulse, homie. Damn son bitch. Son bitch ass lawyer. He gets out of the box truck, he gets in that fake ass hillbilly ass truck of his and drives off. Oh, I'm writing the scene, y'all. I'm not gonna write the scene. But this is, this is probably going to be one of our main cliffhangers for the season, you know. But this is it, because Lou has the tracking on where he was at. If Lou gets suspicious, he's going to dispatch a car there. They're going to find the truck. Boom, it's Larry. We know you was there, and goddammit, Eddie is going down. Once and for all, either you're going to kill off Randall, or you're going to kill off goddammit, Eddie. One of these people got to go now. I, I need people to start dying off. You're saying, we already got rid of the mole, Travis. Thank God. Now I need either. I need both Eddie and um, um, Randall's lizard ass. But I'll take at least one of them. At least one. Anyway. So then now, Brad arrives at the hospital. Marcy is worried. She's frantic. They're not talking to me. They're not telling me anything. And Brad is trying to calm her down. She was like, why won't they tell me a thing? <laughs> I just know I've lost this baby. I know I've lost this baby, which I already told y'all. Marcia's going to lose the baby. I've been predicting it. I've been predicting it. So get your check ready. 
I also accept money orders and credit cards. I understand that. So I'm saying I even take cash. So I'm saying if you're really feeling it, so I'm saying I even take cash on me. So I'm saying cash. So I'm saying you just Western young man. So I'm saying. So he's trying to comfort her, and I'm over it. All right. Um. So then. Um, and she's saying like, I know. I, she goes, I know that this is what that bastard wanted. So she's blaming it on Randall, that like he came there to stress her out. So she would miscarry, you know. Anyway, her phone rings, and and Brad and she, she. Anyway, Brad sees that it's Ian. She goes, "Oh, I need to answer that." And he goes, "No, Malsa, you need to just relax." He goes, "No, I need to answer it because I was supposed to get some papers and documents to him." And it's, you know, it's really important. I, I, you know, I need to, you need to answer the phone. Can you just answer it? So when he answers it, um, Ian goes, he goes, hello. And Ian goes, oh, I'm sorry. I thought I must have the wrong number. He goes, no, you have the right number. Um, you're calling for Marcy. And he goes, yeah. And, um, so she's telling him, like, can you just tell him, like, I'll get the papers to him, you know, as soon as possible. And, um. So then she talks to Ian, and then, you know, he's saying, is everything okay? She was like, I'm just, you know, I'm just under a lot of stress with, you know, um, with the divorce and the baby, you know, and um, he goes, well, I can come to you, you know. She was like, no, you don't have to. He goes, no, I can come to you, you know, I, I can, you know. I appreciate that Ian is still dedicated, but they're also setting us up for what I've already predicted for you guys. Marcy is going to realize that Ian is really one she's in love with. She's going to lose the baby, and they will shuttle off into the into the sunset. I I've already I've already foreseen it. Okay, Oprah and I talked about this before we even start writing first treatment for the first episode of, for the first season of this show. Anyway, recognize truth. Anyway, she goes. I'm trying not to stress. So, um, she goes, tell Brad to tell you where I'm at. So Brad tells him, you know, what hospital they're at and what floor and everything. He goes, okay, I'll be right there. So then they get off the phone and Ian tells the call secretary and says, yeah, send me those, that file that Larry sent in about Randall's divorce decree. Because remember, I told you, I said, do we want to know, did he get that off, you know? And so we're going to find that out then now, you know, and then we'll know if Larry, because now Larry's dead. So now we'll find out, was he able to get trick Randall and get him to sign the divorce decree after all? Come on, Larry, come through, come through, come through. Anyway, so, um, and so he says, you know, uh, let me know, uh, when you do that. All right. So then now we see fake ass Randall at the house. Um, he comes downstairs. I'm over it. And, uh, he calls Larry, leaves a message on his voicemail. Obviously, Larry can't answer the phone right now. Then all of a sudden, his phone alerts. And he goes, is that, is that damn camera still recording? Is that, is that camera still on? So he goes to his laptop, boom, there's the whole damn conversation that Marcy and fucking, uh, or that Alex and Brad had in their living room about the damn switching of the DNA test and all the shit. The lizard has the information now. I'm so worked up, y'all, and I'm so tired, you don't even know. Oh my, and this tea is relaxing me on top of that. And, oh my God. Anyway, he goes storming out the house. Right at that moment, we see fake ass, stank ass, JC Penny's ass, fake bitch ass Alex finishing up with the giving instructions to the babysitter. 
She goes to open her front door and boom, the lizard is right there in her, fra in her face. T-Rex and all, homie. She goes, get away from my door. This made me so sick, y'all. This whole episode, this is the part that really killed me dead. I just can't now. Oh. Anyway, so he goes, who switched it? Who switched the DNA? She goes, I don't know what you're talking about. Lying as a bitch, that's all she do is lie. Oh my God. Anyway. Um, and get out of my way. So, boom, boom. He starts playing it on his thing because he's got a laptop where she hears it. She hears her conversation with her and Brad. Oh my God. I gotta do something with this do ray y'all. I'm about to pass out. All right, y'all. Actually, that's a new one, and I was I'm still breaking it in, and I can't. Anyways, so um, we back to old faithful now. Appreciate you. So I, so I say thank you. So I say thank you, and thank you. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so. <laughs> So, he's playing the damn thing for her. And then, uh, she goes, he goes, who did it? She goes, I don't know. I don't know. He goes, you're a lying ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, too. So, that's one thing ever that we can put on record that I agree with the lizard on. Because <laughs> she's a white ass bitch. And he said it. Just like that. Appreciated that. That was bonus material for me. That'd be good. But see, again, Tyler on my birthday is Sunday, so he's trying to so say, y'all already know. Y'all already know what he's doing. He goes, you will pay for this. But he's still trying to ask her who switched it. She goes, I don't know. I, I, I can't tell you that. I can't tell you that. Fake bitch. Like, you, you, you can't. Uh, damn. She lies. She don't know how to hold her own. She, uh, she's just all things bad, dude. All things bad. She's like, don't lie to me. She goes, Brad, she goes Randall, please. She's gonna ask her favorite so and so, please, 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 Randall, please. Hit her again, hit her again, hit her again. Anyway, so now he gets pissed off, they're going back and forth, and he, she, she starts following him. I go, and I wrote in parentheses, why did she, no, no, before that. I, oh, no, I, I highlight it. She follows him. And he doesn't just go and go to his house. No, no, he has to go around and go to the backyard. I'm like, here we go. It was so cheesy, just that, just doing that, you know? Anyway, so sure enough, the, he goes into the shed. She comes in the shed behind him. Why did she close the door behind her, everybody? Fake bitch. That's why. That's your answer right there. End of end of review. We're done. We're done. She closes the door behind her. And then they're having this whole thing about basically rehashing from when everything started. I can't. But there they are, back in the shed. Anyways, she was like, why can't you just end this? He goes, I'm not going to end this until your ass... He goes, I'm getting my lawyers, and I'm not going to end this until your ass is destroyed, and you're the hell away from here. And I, I don't have to live right next door to your fake ass anymore. Like, I'm putting my words in on it, but you know. And uh, he goes, I'm just, I'm going to end this. I'm going to end this. She goes, why can't you just end this? Why can't you just end this? And 
So she's begging him. Randall, please. And, um... And he's telling her, like, you know, you're having a baby with Marcy. He goes, I don't believe you. Like, how can I believe you now? You know, how do I know that? You know. So, long story short, he's he tells her, get out. She goes, uh, you've always known what I wanted and what I like. He goes, I still know what you like. I still know. She goes, you can have me. He goes, I can have you now. She goes, you can have me. But I still, I just want to be able to have my baby and still be with Brad. But you can have me. That ain't the reason why the bitch is doing it. It's because she dreams about black penis at night, everybody. So whether she was single or married or had a child or didn't, or the bitch was old or young, it don't matter. She's dreaming about black penis and she can't get it off her fucking brain. And that's what's going on. All right, let's bring the truth out here. So sure enough, he goes and st he goes, take your clothes off then. Take your clothes off. This is not good because I can already see and they already tease actually um, yeah, because she goes, oh yeah, you you can have me now. So then he tells her to take her clothes off, and then we see him going for the button too. Then they tease for next week when the fucking funky bitch is coming back around the house. Natalie, so you know I'm saying, sister soldier, Miss Independent, question, is right there. She was like, why are you just coming out from his backyard? Oh, yeah. And somebody was saying they didn't really like that Natalie was being cozy with her and even nice to her, you know, and I agreed with that. But I think this will switch it back to where it need to be where Natalie's ready to punch the bitch out because you're going to see her just a dusty bitch and whatever. And I'm over you. So the what they tease for next week does look like it's going to be good. It does. And it looks like Alex's ass going to be trapped at the fucking hospital because she's, she's taking her bitch ass down there and Dr. Rostin we don't know if we believe her or not but she in the promo she was like I don't know what you're talking about like what did you tell this man it's gonna be good it's gonna be good it's gonna be good it's gonna be good anyways I'm glad this was a sh relatively short episode you guys I can say because I didn't get a chance to do a review I, like I wrote my notes I'll show them to you every six minutes and that's page one page two page three page four Page five. Hopefully you can see that. Hey. Oh, I ripped the other pages out. Anyway, six and seven I ripped out already. Because when I got to tonight's episode of Rock Solid. Anyway. So, I can say I started taking notes and it was a good episode, y'all, but it was just too much. It was just too much. And it was a lot of good stuff, too, that I wasn't going to be able to just pass up and brush over real quick just in the interest of time. You know what I mean? Quita, I would have had to at least do 10 minutes on Quita. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I can't. Anyway, so... If you guys have any suggestions, let me know. You know what I mean? You're the audience. You're why I do it. So I'm here for you. So if you have some suggestions, holler at me and say, Jedi, maybe you could try this or try that. Or, you know, this would be good or whatever. You know, tell me something, y'all, now. You know what I'm saying? Because like I say, you know, I could have done 10 minutes on Quita alone. Plus, it was, um, plus the shit on Stormcloud and Benny and Melissa is a gift. You know, so it's, it means come on now. It was a lot going on, y'all. It was a lot. It was a lot. So, you do what you can. You just do what you can. Anyway, 
Um, I do appreciate you guys for checking me out anyway. Um, and I'm trying to be, <clears throat> you know, stay consistent with the, uh, with my reviews and that. And then two, another thing to remember you guys too, the longer I go, the bigger the file. And I told you guys I have a slow ass fucking internet connection since I moved. And, um, and I don't mind that, you know, but it just takes longer. Like the post-production stuff is long and then, oh my God. Then, you know, so, but anyway, so, but like I said, if you have suggestions about the actual review and things that I can do when it's a long episode like that with a lot of detail, let me know, <clears throat> and I'm happy to consider anything that you guys suggest, you know, whether I, whether I implement it or not, just let's throw some things into a pot, and let's see, you know, maybe we can get something out of it, you know, that type of thing, so, yeah, so, God willing, I'll be back on Tuesday as far as the reviews go, you'll, you'll see me before that with my serious work. But God willing, I'll be back next Tuesday with my review of the haves and have nots. And then on Wednesday with If Loving You Is Wrong. Because like I said, we're going to have one more episode of If Loving You Is Wrong before the season finale. So we're looking forward to that. Looking forward to that. I love you guys all for listening and watching. Shout out to Rail C also. Shout out to my YouTube baby sister, Jada Frazier. The Cousins, Kenneth Stalling, uh, Miss Wincha, Pamela, um, um, Deborah, Miss Deborah, um, mm, Big Baby, um, Torian Rain, um, MW, The Vigilant One. I'm just pulling names, y'all. Just random. They just start coming to me right now. Um, Can't think of nothing. Anyway. My boo, Deidre, she'll kill me if I don't mention her. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, um, another reason why I'm tired, you guys, is because uh, you remember uh, my friend that I was telling you guys about that had the knee surgery um, not too long back. She's doing so much better now. But the little girl that I told you guys that I was uh, – that was with me, that I was taking care of the day we took her to the hospital. She's given a birthday. Her birthday was on the 13th, but she's given a party for on Saturday. Yeah, day before my birthday. And so I was over there helping her blow up balloons and all that kind of stuff. She's getting ready to give her a big party and everything on Saturday. So I was just trying to help out the best way I could and all everything like that. So, um, yeah. Anyways. I'm going to get on up out of here. I love you guys all for listening and watching. I will see you soon. I am the Jedi.